access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Looking at the Universe Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new Conversation Cheat Sheet, you'll learn words like star, planet, the moon, and much more. Second, the Daily Conversations Infographic eBook. You'll learn over 100 conversational phrases with this new PDF eBook. Download it now for free. Third, 15 love phrases for Valentine's Day. If you don't know any romantic phrases, then this bonus is for you. You'll learn to say romantic phrases like you're beautiful, I have a crush on you, and more. Fourth, can you talk about books in your target language? Learn how to say novel, fiction, fantasy, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. And fifth, 20 must-know words and phrases for taking tests. Learn how to say pass, fail, and much more with this quick one-minute lesson. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12-month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Ben Morris, and he's at a small grocery store. After finding something he likes, he points and says, That, please. 그거 주세요. Listen to the conversation and focus on Ben's request. Ready? 그거 주세요. 여기 있습니다. Once more with the English translation. 그거 주세요. That, please. 여기 있습니다. Here you are. Let's take a closer look at how Ben asks for an item without knowing its name. Do you remember how Ben Morris says, that please? The standard way of asking for something follows a simple pattern. First is, 그거. that. 그거. 그거. Next is the phrase, 주세요. meaning, give me, please. 주세요. 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 is from the verb, 주다. To give. 주다. Altogether, it's 그거 주세요. Which literally means that, give me, please. But translates as that, please. 그거 주세요. Do you remember how the clerk says, Here you are? 여기 있습니다. First is, 여기. Here. 여기. 여기. Next is, 있습니다. In this case, think of it as, it is. As in, here it is. 있습니다. 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 Is the formal form of, 있다. Meaning, to exist or to be in this context. 있다. The formal sentence ending, 씁니다. Is used by the supermarket clerk to show respect to the customer. Together, it's 여기 있습니다, which literally means here the object exists, but translates as here you are in English. 여기 있습니다. The pattern is. Item, 주세요. Item, please. Item, 주세요. To use this pattern, simply replace the item placeholder with the thing you want. Imagine you'd like some water. 
물, 물, 물. Say, water, please. Ready? Bull Juseo. Water, please. Bull Juseo. In Korean, the following three words refer to a thing depending on the distance from the speaker and the listener. For things located close to the speaker, e ko. This, e ko, e ko. For things located far from the speaker but close to the listener, kugo. That, kugo, kugo. And finally, for things located far from both the speaker and listener, chogo. That over there, chogo, chogo. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 그거 주세요. 그거 주세요. 물 주세요. 물 주세요. 바나나 주세요. 바나나 주세요. 저거 주세요. 저거 주세요. 물이랑 이거 주세요. 물이랑 이거 주세요. Did you notice how I used a different pattern? 물이랑 이거 주세요. Water and this, please. 물이랑 이거 주세요. First is 물. Water. 물. Next is 이랑. A particle translating as and in this context. 이랑. 이랑. Note, there are two forms of this particle. 이랑 follows words that end in a consonant like 물랑 follows words that end in a vowel like 이거 next is 이거 this 이거 together 물이랑 이거 water and this 물이랑 이거 note if the order were reversed this and water. The connecting particle would change. 이거랑 물. This and water. Last is 주세요. Meaning, give me, please. 주세요. Altogether, 물이랑 이거 주세요. Water and this, please. 물이랑 이거 주세요. The pattern is item. 랑 or 이랑 item 주세요 item and item please item 랑 or 이랑 item 주세요 Let's review the key words 물 water 물, 물, 바나나, banana, 바나나, 바나나, 저거, that over there, 저거, 저거, 이거, this. 이거, 이거. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. 
Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say give me please? 주세요. 주세요. Do you remember how Ben says that please? Do you remember how to say here? 여기. 여기. And do you remember how the clerk says, Here you are? 여기 있습니다. 여기 있습니다. Do you remember how to say water? 물. 물. And how to say banana? Banana. Banana. Do you remember how to say this? 이거. 이거. Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben, and you're at the grocery store to buy water. Ready? Listen again and repeat. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha, and you're at the grocery store to buy a banana. Ready? Banana, 주세요. 여기 있습니다. Listen again and repeat. Banana, 주세요. Banana, 주세요. Let's try one more. Now imagine you're Karen, and you see an item on the counter within arm's reach. Point to it and say, this, please. Ready? 이거 주세요. 여기 있습니다. Listen again and repeat. 이거 주세요. 이거 주세요. When someone hands you an object, you may show that you respect that person by receiving it with both hands, not just one. Some might consider it rude if you snatch away or get the object with one hand only. This is Sasha Morris. She's at a small grocery store, and she wants to buy some salt. She gets the clerk's attention and asks, Excuse me, do you have any salt? 저기요, 소금 있어요? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. Ready? 저기요, 소금 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. Once more with the English translation. 저기요, 소금 있어요? Excuse me, do you have any salt? 네, 여기 있어요. Yes, it's here. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Sasha Morris says, Excuse me, do you have any salt? This starts with 
저기요. Excuse me. 저기요. 저기. Literally, over there. It refers to a place that is a bit away from the speaker. It can also be used to call a person, as in the dialogue. 저기. 저기. Next is 요. A polite informal sentence ending. 요. 요. Note, adding 요 at the end of a sentence makes it more polite. Altogether, 저기요 literally means over there, but it translates as excuse me. 저기요 Next is 소금 salt. 소금 소금 Note, the subject marking particle E in this case, which would mark 소금 salt, as the subject of the sentence, is omitted. In spoken Korean, speakers tend to omit particles when it's clear which particle would be used. After this is 있어요? which translates as do you have, in this context. 있어요? 있어요? Translation note. 있어요? Could also translate as is there, as in is there any salt? 있어요? Is the informal polite form of 있다. Meaning to exist, to be, or to have. 있다. Together it's 소금 있어요? This literally means salt you have, but it translates as do you have any salt? 소금 있어요? Note the rising intonation that indicates this is a question. Listen again. 저기요, 소금 있어요? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how the clerk says? Yes, it's here. First is 네. Yes. 네. 네. The shop clerk responds with 네. Yes to answer Sasha's question. After this, the clerk says 여기 있어요. Translating as It's here. 여기 있어요. Note the clerk is pointing while saying this. First is 여기 meaning here. 여기 여기 Next is 있어요 translating as it's in this context. 있어요 Recall 있어요 is the informal polite form of 있다 meaning to exist, to be or to have, in this context. 있다. Note the intonation. Without the rising intonation, the statement is declarative. Altogether, it's 네, 여기 있어요. This literally means, yes, here it is, but translates as, yes, it's here. 네, 여기 있어요. The pattern is Item 있어요? Do you have item? Item 있어요? To use this pattern, simply replace the item placeholder with the thing you're looking for. Imagine you're looking for milk. 우유 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 Say, do you have milk? Ready? Do you have milk? In most cases, 
Korean doesn't make a distinction between singular and plural nouns. You will use the same pattern when you are looking for salt or an apple or a dozen apples. For example, 사과 있어요? can translate as are there any apples? or is there an apple? depending on the number of apples. The English translation may alternate between singular and plural, but the Korean pattern remains the same. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 소금 있어요? 소금 있어요? 우유 있어요? 우유 있어요? 사과 있어요? 사과 있어요? 후추 있어요? 후추 있어요? 설탕은 어디에 있어요? 설탕은 어디에 있어요? Did you notice how I used a different pattern? Where is the sugar? First is 설탕. Sugar. 설탕. 설탕. Next is 은. The topic marking particle. 은. 은. It marks sugar as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for. In the expression, as for sugar. Next is, 어디. Where. 어디. 어디. After this is the particle, 에. The location marking particle. 에. 에. In this sentence, think of it as the on or at. In spoken Korean. It's often omitted, as speakers tend to omit particles when it's clear which particle would be used. After this is, 있어요? Translating as, is, as in, where is the sugar, in this context. 있어요? 있어요. Is the informal polite form of, 있다. Meaning to be, in this context. 있다. Together, it's 설탕은 어디에 있어요? Literally, as for sugar, where is it? But it translates as, where is the sugar? 설탕은 어디에 있어요? You should be aware of this pattern, but you won't need it for this lesson. Let's review the key words. 우유 Milk. 우유. 우유. 사과. Apple. 사과. 사과. 후추. Pepper. 후추. 후추. 설탕. Sugar. 설탕. 설탕. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say salt? 소금, 소금. And how to say excuse me? 저기요, 저기요. Do you remember how Sasha Morris asks, Excuse me, do you have any salt? 
저기요, 소금 있어요? 저기요, 소금 있어요? Do you remember how to say yes? 네. 네. And how to say here? 여기. 여기. Do you remember how the clerk says, yes, it's here? 네, 여기 있어요. 네, 여기 있어요. Do you remember how to say apple? 사과. 사과. And how to say sugar? 설탕. 설탕. Do you remember how to say milk? 우유. 우유. 저기요, 설탕 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. Listen again and repeat. 저기요, 설탕 있어요? 저기요, 설탕 있어요? Let's try another. Imagine you're looking for the apples. Ask if they have any. Ready? 저기요, 사과 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. Listen again and repeat. 저기요, 사과 있어요? 저기요, 사과 있어요? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Morris, and you're at the grocery store to buy milk. Ready? 저기요, 우유 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. Listen again and repeat. 저기요, 우유 있어요? 저기요, 우유 있어요? Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to use when talking with friends. After watching this video, you'll be able to have a casual conversation with a friend, and to say something is super. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. 야, 저차좀 봐. 와, 완전 멋지다. Once more with the English translation. 야, 저차좀 봐. Hey, look at that car. 와, 완전 멋지다. Wow, that's super cool. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, Hey, look at that car. That's... 야, 저차좀 봐. Listen to it again. 야, 저, 차, 좀, 봐. 야, 저차좀 봐. This Korean sentence literally translates as, Hey, that car a bit, look. 
but it means, hey, look at that car. Now, how do you respond to this? First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, wow. That's, wow, wow. Then, you'll need to learn how to say, that's super adjective. The pattern is, 완전, adjective. This Korean sentence literally translates as, totally adjective. But it means, that's super adjective. For example, that's super cool. 완전 멋지다. 완전 멋지다. Here are a few more words you can use with the same pattern to talk about something. Cool. 멋지다. 멋지다. Cool. 멋지다. Cute. 귀엽다. 귀엽다. Cute. 귀엽다. Ugly. 추하다. 추하다. Ugly. 추하다. Nice. 좋다. 좋다. Nice. 좋다. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 야, 저차좀 봐. 완전 귀엽다. Hey, look at that car. 야, 저차좀 봐. That's super cute. 완전 귀엽다. 야, 저차좀 봐. 완전 추하다. Hey, look at that car. 야, 저차좀 봐. That's super ugly. 완전 추하다. 야, 저차좀 봐. 완전 좋다. Hey, look at that car. 야, 저차좀 봐. That's super nice. 완전 좋다. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, Hey, look at that car. Yeah, 저차좀 봐. Now, imagine you want to say something is super cute. Do you remember how to say cute? 귀엽다. 귀엽다. Say, that's super cute. 완전 귀엽다. Now, respond using cute. 야, 저차좀 봐. 완전 귀엽다. Now imagine you want to say something is super ugly. Do you remember how to say ugly? 추하다. 추하다. Say, that's super ugly. 완전 추하다. Now respond using ugly. 야, 저차좀 봐. 완전 추하다. Now imagine you want to say something is super nice. Do you remember how to say nice? 
좋다. 좋다. Say that's super nice. 완전 좋다. Now respond using nice. 야, 저차좀 봐. 완전 좋다. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use to talk with friends. You're now able to have a casual conversation like a native speaker. Hi everyone! Welcome to Korean whiteboard lesson. My name is Kajin. 안녕하세요, Kajin입니다. In this lesson, you will learn how to make basic comparisons in Korean. So let's get started. Okay, so let's look at the sentence pattern. Place one plus 은 or 는 and place two 보다 adjective. So this is the form and the meaning is place one is adjective then place two. So when you compare something, you put the first comparison noun here. And then you put 은 or 는. So when this place, the name of the place, ends with consonant, then you use 은 here. What if the name of the place ends with vowel? Then you use 는 here. I'll show you examples very soon. And put the place name, which you want to compare. It doesn't have to be place, actually. For example, you can compare the size of small cup or anything. Oh, I have more money. Money or fruits, anything is okay. But today's example, I'll show you uh, place names in Korea. And 보다, 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 보다 means then in Korea. So in English, you say then place two, like then Seoul, then New York. But in Korean, the order is opposite. So you put the name of the place or name of the thing first and say 보다. And then adjective comes at the end. While in English, you put the adjective in the middle of the sentence. So the order is different, but the meaning is the same. Place one, 은, 는. Place two, 보다, adjective. Actually, it's much simpler than English. In English, you change the form of the adjective. For example, if it's cold, then you change it to colder. Is it big? Then you change it to bigger. Or is crowded? Then you say more crowded. It's pretty? Then more, more pretty or prettier, right? So you change the English uh, adjective. But in Korea, we don't change the format at all. You just use the adjective directly. However, if you want to say the more, then you can also put this word. 더. Ta. So this is optional. Ta. It just means more, more. Ta. 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 You can put ta here, but anyway, you have 보다 here. So then something, then something. So place to 보다. So everyone knows that you're comparing something. So you don't have to put ta. Ta. So it's optional, it's up to you. The meaning doesn't change, the nuance doesn't change. So you can put 더 or not, it's up to you. But without it, it's still fine. Place 1, 은는. Place 2, 보다. 더, 뜨르. Put the adjective here. Let's look at some more examples. So using this pattern, I made these two sentences. 파주 is colder than Seoul. 파주, 파주 is the name of the city in Korea. 는, 는, 파주 ended with vowel sound, right? 파주, 파주, 우, 우. It ended with vowel sounds, so we use 는 here. 파주는 서울, 서울 is the capital of Korea. 서울, 보다, 보다, so then 서울. 추워요, 추워요 means cold, right? Cold. 파주는 서울보다 추워요. 파주 is colder than Seoul. 
So we don't change the form of the adjective. You just use it directly and that's totally fine. But if you want to put the here, of course, you can put the here. The, the. It, the meaning doesn't change. 파주는 서울보다 더 추워요 means 파주 is colder than Seoul. But what if you want to use this, Seattle, which ends with consonant? So Seattle in Korean is Seattle, 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 tl, tl. It ends with consonant sound, right? You see tl here. So we use un here, un, un. Seattle, Seattle은 시애틀은 양평 Again, is the name of the city in Korea. 양평보다, so then 양평 오래됐어요. 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 오래됐어요 means old, old, old. So you can say 시애틀은 양평보다 오래됐어요. Seattle is older than 양평. 시애틀은 양평보다 오래됐어요. By the way, do you see this adjective? Old, 오래되다, 오래되다. This is the dictionary form, but when you use it, you always use it as a past form. So you don't say 시애틀은 양평보다 오래돼요. 부부부, you don't say that way. You always use this 오래되다, this one, as past form, as 오래됐다, or 오래됐어, 오래됐어요. 오래 됐습니다. So you can change the ending, but remember, it should be the past form. 시애틀은 양평보다 오래 됐어요. Now, let's look at the dialogue and see how the sentence pattern is used in the actual example. 강릉은 커요? 강릉은 커요? 강릉은 커요? Is Gangneung big? Gangneung is Seoul boda kyo. Gangneung is Seoul boda kyo. Gangneung is Seoul boda kyo. Gangneung is bigger than Seoul. Well, Seoul is the definitely biggest city in Korea, but it's in terms of population. The size is not so big. Actually, there are bigger cities in Korea. So in terms of size, Gangneung is bigger. And do you see the sentence pattern here? Gangneung은 서울보다 커요. So I use 은보다 커요. I use 은 because 강릉, 강릉, it ended with consonant, right? 강릉, so I used 은 here. Seoul, name of the city, 보다 then, 커요 is big. 강릉은 서울보다 커요. And if you want to use this pattern, 더, 더, then you can also put it here. 강릉은 서울보다 더 커요. 더 커요. The meaning is the same. 강릉은 서울보다 더 커요. Okay, so let's look at some more vocabulary here. So, 는 보다 더워요. 는 보다 더워요. So, 더워요 here means hot. So, here, as an example, I'm going to put 여수. 여수 is the name of the city in Korea and located in southern part. 여수는 시애틀 여수는 시애틀보다 더워요. 여수는 시애틀보다 더워요. 여수 is hotter than Seattle. 여수는 시애틀보다 더워요. Do you see this? 여수 여수 So it ended with 우우 vowel sound. So we use 는 here. 여수는 시애틀보다 더워요, 더워요. How about this? 인천은 Again, it's the name of the city in Korea. 창원 인천은 
창원보다 사람이 많아요. 인천, 인천, 인천. It ended with kind of n sound. So I used 은 here because it's consonant. 인천은 창원보다 사람이 많아요. 사람이 많아요 means more crowded. 사람이 많아요 means just crowded. And 사람 means person, right? 이 is particle. 많아요 means a lot. So it literally means people are a lot. In Korean, 사람이 많아요. And in English, is crowded. 인천은 창원보다 사람이 많아요. 인천 is more crowded than 창원. Then how about this one? 고향은 김포. 고향은 김포보다 작아요. Okay, name of the city. 고향, 고향. It ended with consonant. So I used 은 here. 고향은 김포보다 작아요. 작아요 means small. So 고향은 김포보다 작아요. So here, actually you can put 더 here. 여수는 시애틀보다 더 더워요. It means exactly the same. And you can put 더 here. What if you want to say 인천은 창원보다 사람이 많아요 and you want to add some more information. 인천 is pretty more crowded than 창, 창원. Pretty or quite. 인천 is quite more crowded than 창원. So you give some more nuance, right? We can put the adjective here. You can put 꽤. 꽤, 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 꽤 means pretty or quiet. 꽤, so you can put it here after 보다. 꽤, 꽤, 꽤. What if you want to say a lot? So for example, 고향은 김포보다 작아요. 고향 is smaller than 김포, but you want to say 고향 is way more, much more, way much. You want to emphasize that a lot, a lot smaller. Then 김포. Then you can say 훨씬 훨 훨씬. Yes, you can put 훨씬 here. 훨씬 훨씬. 여수는 시애틀보다 더워요. 인천은 창원보다 사람이 많아요. 인천은 창원보다 꽤 사람이 많아요. 고향은 김포보다 작아요. 고향은 김포보다 훨씬 작아요. So these are the sentences using this sentence pattern. So please review it. I mentioned many Korean cities in the examples. Let me introduce some of them. 파주는 서울보다 추워요. 파주 is located in northern South Korea. It's more north than Seoul and it's colder. And Seoul is the capital of Korea. 여수는 시애틀보다 더워요. 여수 is located in southern South Korea and it's warmer. 시애틀은 양평보다 오래됐어요. 양근 and 지평 were coalesced and the place was named 양평 in 1908. 양 is from 양근 and 평 is from 지평. 인천은 창원보다 사람이 많아요. 인천 is the city where the biggest international airport in Korea is located. 커요. 커요. And how to say bigger than Seoul? 서울보다 커요. 서울보다 커요. Do you remember how to say Seoul? 서울. 서울. And how to say Gangneung is bigger than Seoul? Gangneung은 서울보다 커요. 강릉은 
서울보다 커요. And how to say cold? 추워요. 추워요. Do you remember how to say hot? 더워요. 더워요. Do you remember how to say old? 오래됐어요. 오래됐어요. And how to say crowded? 사람이 많아요. 사람이 많아요. Do you remember how to say small? 작아요. 작아요. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we've learned how to make basic comparisons in Korean. Thanks for watching. I'm Kajin and I'll see you on koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 봐요. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Korean whiteboard lesson. My name is Kajin. 안녕하세요. In this lesson, you will learn how to give simple directions in Korean. Let's get started. First, let's look at the dialogue. A student is looking for the library. She's asking how to get there. So I read out the dialogue so see how much you can understand. So, 도서관이 어디에 있어요? 쭉 가세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. Did you understand? 도서관이 어디에 있어요? Where is the library? 도서관. 도서관. It means library. E is subject marking particle, and we used E here because 도서관, 도서관, it ended with consonant, right? 도서관, so we use E. If this word ended with a vowel sound, then you will use 가 here, 가. For example, 카페 in Korean is 카페, 카페, 페. In this case, you will use 가 here, 카페 가. So, 어디에 있어요? 어디 means where. 에 is location marking particle. 있어요 is located. So, it literally means where is the library located? 도서관이 어디에 있어요? 도서관이 어디에 있어요? 도서관이 어디에 있어요? Let's look at the answer. 쭉 가세요. 쭉 means straight. But Korean people often extend this sound as 쭉, 쭉. Because we want to emphasize that it's pretty far. So when it's far, they will make this sound even longer. So 쭉 가세요. 가세요 means go. But it's a polite way to say go, so it will be like Please go in English. So, it literally, please go straight. 쭉 가세요. Or Korean people might say, 쭉 가세요. 쭉 가세요. 쭉 가세요. Go straight. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 그러고 나서 it means and then and then 그러고 나서 사거리 사거리 it means intersection 사거리 사거리 and there is another way to say intersection in Korean which is 
교차로? So some people might say 교차로, 교차로, and some people will say 사거리. 사거리에서 or 교차로에서. It means at the intersection. So 에서 is another location marking particle. It's like at or in in English. 사거리에서. 오른쪽으로 도세요. 오른쪽, 오른쪽 means right or right side. 오른쪽으로. Another particle here is a particle for direction. So it's similar to towards in English. 오른쪽으로, toward right side. 오른쪽으로, 도세요. 도세요 is another polite way to say please turn, please turn. 도세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. And then, please turn right at the intersection. Next sentence here. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. Now you found familiar word. 도서관, which is library. 도서관. 은 is topic marking particle. And we use 은 here because 도서관, 도서관. This word is ended with consonant. 도서관. So we use 은. What if the word is ended with vowel sound? For example, like 카페, 카페, 페. In this case, you, you will use 는 here. But again, 도서관 ended with a consonant, so we will use 은 here. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. 왼쪽, 왼쪽, another key word for today. 왼쪽 means left, left side. 왼쪽에 에 is the particle that we learned here. 있어요, 있어요 means located. So it means the library is on the left. The library is located on the left side. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. So let's look at this map. So this A, this one person, person one is looking for the library. Where is the library? And this answer is saying, 쭉 가세요. So this one is going straight. 쭉 가세요. 쭉 가세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. Okay, so at the intersection, oh, there is an intersection. And this person is saying, turn right, right? Okay, I turn right. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. The library is on the left. Oh, here, so this is a library. I arrived. So we learned this important direction words today. 쭉, straight. 오른쪽, 오른쪽 means right. And 왼쪽, 왼쪽, 왼쪽 is used here too. 왼쪽 means left, right? 쭉, 오른쪽, 왼쪽. And also for place, we just learned 도서관. 도서관 means library, library. We also learned 사거리, 사거리. Right? So it means intersection. There are other words that you will find in the next dialogue, which is 슈퍼. 슈퍼. It's from the English word. It's an English loan word, which is supermarket. 슈퍼. 슈퍼. How about this? Bank. Bank in Korean is 은행. 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 도서관, 슈퍼, 은행, 사거리. You will find these place word and direction words in the next dialogue. Okay, so let's look at more examples. How about this? 오른쪽으로 가세요. 오른쪽으로 가세요. Okay, so number two. So this number two is saying 오른쪽으로 가세요. 오른쪽 means right. Okay, so I'll go right. 가세요 means go right. Do you remember? 가세요 means Please go. So I'll go right. Okay, I'll go right side. 그러고 나서, 그러고 나서 사거리에서, 사거리에서 오른쪽으로, 오른쪽으로 도세요. 도세요. And then 
At the intersection, yes, I found the intersection. 오른쪽으로 도세요. 오른쪽 means right again. Okay, I turned right here. How about this? 슈퍼는 왼쪽에 있어요. 슈퍼는 왼쪽에 있어요. We just learned this word, right? Supermarket. Supermarket is where? 왼쪽. 왼쪽 means left. Oh, okay. So it's left. Left. So number two. Okay, this person found the supermarket. How about this? 왼쪽으로 가세요. Now you're familiar with this sentence pattern, right? 왼쪽으로 가세요. 왼쪽 means left, right? 왼쪽, 왼쪽. Okay, so number three. Number three person is here. Okay, so I'll go left. 왼쪽으로 가세요. Please go to the right side. Please go right. And then, 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 그러고 나서, and then, 사거리에서 at the intersection, 오른쪽으로 도세요. Okay? This person turn right. So this person turn right at the intersection. 오른쪽으로 도세요. And 은행은, 은행은 왼쪽에 있어요. 은행은 왼쪽에 있어요. Oh, so this number three is on the left side. 왼쪽에 있어요. So found it. 은행은 왼쪽에 있어요. So this person found the bank here. So, do you see the sentence pattern here? So, we write down here. 쭉 가세요. 쭉 가세요. Go straight. Please go straight. 쭉 가세요. And you put the direction words here. It can be right, 오른쪽. It can be left, 왼쪽. And just say, 으로, towards, 가세요. Please go. Please go to the right, left, 오른쪽으로 가세요. 왼쪽으로 가세요. How about this? Right or left? 으로 도세요. Please turn left to right or left. If it's a right, you will say 오른쪽으로 도세요. If it's left, then you will say 왼쪽으로 도세요. How about this? You put the name of the place. For example, it can be library, supermarket, bank, or the cafe that we learned. 카페, 카페는 right or left에 있어요. 카페, 카페, it ended with vowel sound, so I use 는, 는 here. Supermarket too. 슈퍼, 슈퍼, it ended with a vowel sound, so I'm using 는 here. 는 here. 슈퍼는, 슈퍼는. How about this 은행? If it's 은행, bank, then I will use Un here because 은행, 은행, it ended with a consonant sound, so I will use 은 here. So you have to see which sound it ends with. 은, 는, so you will use different particle here. And then, if it's right, then you will say 오른쪽. If it's left, then you will say 왼쪽. And just say 에 있어요, is located. 에 있어요. In Korea, more people use neighbor map and Kakao map instead of Google Maps. So if you visit Korea, download these two apps that will be really helpful when you travel in Korea. Do you remember how to say straight? Juk. Juk. And how to say please go? Kaseo. Kaseo. Do you remember how to say please go straight? Ju Kaseo. Ju Kaseo. And do you remember how to say please turn?
도세요. 도세요. Do you remember how to say right? <목소리> 오른쪽. 오른쪽. And how to say please turn right? 오른쪽으로 도세요. 오른쪽으로 도세요. Do you remember how to say intersection? 사거리 사거리 And how to say at the intersection? 사거리에서 사거리에서 Do you remember how to say and then? 그러고 나서 그러고 나서 And how to say and then turn right at the intersection? 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. Do you remember how to say left? 왼쪽 왼쪽 do you remember how to say on the left? 왼쪽에 왼쪽에 And do you remember how to say library? 도서관 도서관 do you remember how to say the library is on the left? 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. And how to say go straight and then turn right at the intersection. The library is on the left. 쭉 가세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. 쭉 가세요. 그러고 나서 사거리에서 오른쪽으로 도세요. 도서관은 왼쪽에 있어요. Do you remember how to say supermarket? 슈퍼 슈퍼 And how to say bank? 은행 은행 Well done! That's it for this lesson. Here, we've learned how to give simple directions in Korean. Thanks for watching. I'm Kejin and I'll see you on koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 봐요. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Korean Whiteboard lesson. My name is Kejin. 안녕하세요, Kejin입니다. In this lesson, you will learn common adverb of frequency to talk about daily habits. Okay, so let's look at the vocabulary. First word we have is 항상 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 meaning always. There is another word for always which is 
언제나 언제나 It means the same, but 항상 is used more commonly. 항상 or 언제나 언제나 Next word is every day. Every day in Korean is 매일 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 매 means every and 일 means day. So it literally means every day or every single day. There is another word for every day in Korean, which is 맨날 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 and 매일 are the same, but 맨날 is often used as always too. And it's often used colloquially. For example, you always do that. In that case, we often use this. 맨날 해. 너 맨날 그래. 맨날, 맨날, 맨날. So, 맨날 is used for always too. Next word we have is 자주. 자주. It means often. 자주. 자주. Next word we have is 보통. 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 It means usually or normally. 보통. There is another word for usually or normally, which is 주로. 주로. But this one is more close to mainly. 주로. 주로. Next, we have sometimes, which is 가끔. 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 How about this? Rarely. Rarely in Korean is 아주 가끔. 아주 가끔. 아주 means very. 아주, 아주. And 가끔 means sometimes. So it literally means very sometimes, which is rarely in Korean. 아주 가끔. 아주 가끔. How about this? 어쩌다 한 번. 어쩌다 한 번. 어쩌다 한 번. Once in a while. You see 한번 here. 한 번, it means once. So 어쩌다 한번 means once in a while. So we have this common Korean adjective for frequency. 항상, 언제나, means always. 매일, 매일, or 맨날, means every day. 자주, means often. 보통 means usually, normally. 주로 also means the same or mainly. 가끔, sometimes. 아주 가끔, rarely. 어쩌다 한 번, once in a while. Let's look at the dialogue. Two neighbors are talking. I read it out and please find what adjective is used and how is used in the sentence. 아침 먹어요? 네, 매일 아침을 먹어요. Once again. 아침 먹어요? 네, 매일 아침을 먹어요. 아침 means breakfast or morning. And 먹어요 means to eat. 아침 먹어요? So it means, do you eat breakfast? 네, yes. 매일, we have the adverb here, 매일, which means that every day, every day. 매일, 아침을 먹어요. Yes, I eat breakfast every day. Let's see more examples. How about this? 보통, 보통, we learn this here, usually, usually, right? 보통, 커피를 마셔요. 보통 커피를 마셔요. 보통 usually 커피 means coffee, coffee. In Korean, we don't have the F sound. So instead of coffee, we replace the F sound with P sound as copy, copy. So it's a long word, but again, we don't say coffee, it's copy. Copy. 커피를 마셔요. 마셔요 means to drink. I drink. 보통 커피를 마셔요. I usually drink coffee. How 
How about this? 가끔, 가끔. Do you remember this word? Means sometimes, sometimes. 가끔 음악을 들어요. 가끔 음악을 들어요. 음악 means music. 을 particle 들어요 meaning listen. So 음악을 들어요 means listen to music. 음악을 들어요. 가끔 음악을 들어요. I sometimes listen to music. How about this? 항상 TV를 봐요. 항상 means always, right? And TV is another long word from television. In English, you say TV, right? TV. In Korean, we don't have V sound. So instead of V, we say B sound. B, B. So replace V sound with B. As in TV, TV. TV를 봐요 means I watch. I watch TV always. I always watch TV. 항상 TV를 봐요. Do you see the pattern here? So we put the adverb here and say verb phrase. So Korean adverb is usually very flexible. It can go anywhere, but the common pattern is this. It comes before the verb phrase. 보통 커피를 마셔요. 가끔 음악을 들어요. 항상 TV를 봐요. Do you remember how to say every day? <목소리> 매일 매일 And how to say breakfast? 아침 아침 Do you remember how to say eat? 먹어요 먹어요 And how to say eat breakfast? 아침을 먹어요 아침을 먹어요. And do you remember how to say I eat breakfast every day? 매일 아침을 먹어요. 매일 아침을 먹어요. Do you remember how to say always? 항상, 항상. And do you remember how to say often? 자주, 자주. Do you remember how to say usually? 보통, 보통. And how to say sometimes? 가끔 가끔 Do you remember how to say rarely? 아주 가끔 아주 가끔 And do you remember how to say once in a while? 어쩌다 한 번. 어쩌다 한 번. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, you learn the common adverb of frequency in Korean. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 봐요. Welcome to the Korean whiteboard lesson. My name is Kaijin. 안녕하세요, Kaijin입니다. In this lesson, you learn how to use greetings and parting expressions in Korean. Let's get started. Okay, so let's look at some expressions. 
First, we have 안녕하세요. 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 It means hello. And it's a standard way to say hello. It's polite enough to use it to someone who you don't know very well or mm, friendly enough to use someone who you are close to. So, 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 안녕. 안녕. It's informal way to say hello. So, it's like hi in English. Or you can also use it when you say bye. So, informal way to say bye in Korean is 안녕. 안녕. This is very useful because you can say hello or bye with this one word. 안녕. How about this one? 좋은 아침이에요. 좋은 아침이에요. 좋은 아침이에요. It means good morning. This is not traditional expression in Korean. This is probably from the English word good morning. So it's not as common as these two words. 안녕하세요. 안녕. These are much more common than 좋은 아침이에요. 좋은 literally means good. 좋은 좋은. 아침 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 means morning. 이에요 is from the verb 이다 이다. Technically, it's a particle, but it acts like a verb. In English, it's similar to be verb, be. 좋은 아침이에요. So it literally means it's a good morning. 좋은 아침이에요. Informally, you can also say 좋은 아침. 좋은 아침. 좋은 아침. So you omit this part, 이에요, and just say 좋은 아침. So these are the phrases you need to memorize when you say hello in Korean. Then how about goodbye? Goodbye in Korean, there are many different expressions. First, we have 잘 자요, meaning good night. 잘 자요, 잘 자요, 잘, 잘. It literally, literally means well, 잘, 잘. 자요 means to sleep, to sleep. So it literally means sleep well. Sleep well in Korean is 잘 자요, 잘 자요. It's polite expression. How about this? 또 봐요, 또 봐요, 또 봐요. It means see you again. 또, 또 means again. 또, 또 봐요 means to see, to watch. To look. So, 또 봐요 means see you again, see you again. Next, we have 다음에 봐요. 다음에 봐요. 다음에 봐요. 다음에 means next time. 다음에 means next time. 다음 is next time and 에 is particle for time. 다음에, so in English, it's more like on next time. So, 에 is like on or at, and this is a particle for time. For example, instead of next time, you want to say, mm, see you on Monday. Monday in Korean is 월요일. 월요일, 월요일. So, instead of next time, which is 다음, you can just say 월요일에 봐요 means see you on Monday. Or how about this? Um, you want to meet the person at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. 5 o'clock in Korean is 5시. 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 So instead of 다음, you can put 5시 and say 에, the particle for time. 봐요, 봐요. 다섯 시에 봐요 means see you at five o'clock. So you put the time word here and say 에 봐요. 다음에 봐요. Next, we have 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. It means goodbye. Oh, then do you see this? We have one more goodbye. 안녕히 가세요. 
So we have exactly same meaning, but there is slight difference. Let's look at this. 안녕히, 안녕히, 안녕히. It means in peace. 계세요, 계세요, 계세요 is very polite form of 있다, 있다. It's from 있다, 있다 meaning to stay. 계세요 is a nerfy form of 있다. 안녕히 계세요, 안녕히 계세요. It literally means stay in peace, stay in peace. Goodbye, stay in peace. 안녕히 계세요. How about this one? We have this in peace and 가세요. 가세요 is a nerfy way to say go. Go in Korean is 가다, right? 가다. But we are using 가세요 is very nerfy expression. 안녕히 가세요. So it literally means go in peace, go in peace. So can you guess what it means? As you can see here, this person stayed in this place. And then now leaving, now leaving, and I want to say bye. So this person is leaving and saying this phrase to someone staying. Again, this person is leaving. Hey, I'm leaving. Bye. And then this person is saying bye to someone who is staying. That's why this person is saying, hey, stay in peace, stay in peace. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. And this person is saying, go in peace, go in peace, right? Because this person is going, leaving, and you are still staying. This person is staying and saying this phrase to someone leaving. So you say, 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. So 안녕히 계세요 is used by someone who is leaving. And this person is saying this phrase to someone who is staying. 안녕히 가세요 is 급하지, right? This person is staying and saying this phrase to someone who is leaving. 안녕히 가세요. And these are very, very polite. This is polite. How can you say informally? 잘 자요. 잘 자요. Just remove you. Then you say 잘 자. 잘 자. It's an informal way to say good night. Here, you omit you at the end. 또 봐, 또 봐. It's an informal way to say see you again. Here too. Omit this. 다음에 봐. It's an informal way to say see you next time. Here. So can I say 안녕히 계세? 안녕히 가세? No. This is a nerfy form. So we have different expression. So this person will be saying 잘 있어 or you 잘 있어요 잘 means we saw it here right it means well 있어 means stay so it literally means stay well stay well 잘 있어 is informal 잘 있어요 is still friendly but it's polite 잘 있어요 this is 잘가 you and this person will be saying 잘가 mm? 잘 means well 가 means go so it literally means go well 잘가 is informal and 잘가요 잘가요 is friendly enough but still is polite 잘가요 and these two are very polite it's a nerfy expression and for good night there is also a nerfy expression that you can use it to your grandparents, or your boss, or professor, someone who is higher position than you, then you can say 안녕히 주무세요 안녕히 주무세요 안녕히 주무세요 So it's a nerf form, which is very formal 잘 자요 is friendly, polite 잘자 is informal. So we learned greetings and parting greetings that are commonly used in Korea. Okay, let's look at the dialogue. Two neighbors are passing each other in the lobby of their apartment building. 
please find what greetings are used in the dialogue and how they are used. Okay, so let's look at it. 안녕하세요. 안녕. One more time. 안녕하세요. 안녕. 안녕하세요. Do you remember what it is? 안녕하세요. It means hello. It's a polite way to say hello. 안녕하세요. 안녕. 안녕 is informal way to say hello, just like hi in English, right? 안녕. By looking at this dialogue, I can already guess their relationship. So, 안녕하세요. The person who said this phrase is probably younger because this person is using the polite language. This person is trying to be polite. How about this? 안녕 is informal language, right? Meaning this person is probably older. So this person is using the informal language to the person who is younger. So 안녕하세요, 안녕. Just by looking at this, you can even guess their age. Keep in mind that bowing is a big part of Korean culture. Bowing shows humility and respect. The amount of time you hold your bow displays the intent and purpose of your greeting. The longer you hold your bow, the more respect and humility it conveys. Also, the angle of your bow shows how much respect you are expressing with your greeting. The most common one is short, quick bow like a note. You use it when you say hello or goodbye politely. 안녕하세요. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 가세요. When you say hello or goodbye casually, you just wave your hands. 안녕. 잘 있어. 잘 가. 또 봐. 다음에 봐. Do you remember the polite way to say hello? Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. And the informal way to say hi or bye? Annyeong. Annyeong. Do you remember how to say good morning? <laughs> 좋은 아침이에요. 좋은 아침이에요. And how to say good night? <laughs> 잘 자요. 잘 자요. Do you remember the polite way to say goodbye to someone staying when you leave? 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. And the polite way to say goodbye to someone leaving while you stay? 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. Do you remember the polite way to say see you again? 또 봐요. 또 봐요. And the polite way to say see you next time? 다음에 봐요. 다음에 봐요. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we've learned greetings and parting greetings in Korean. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Kajin and I'll see you on koreanclass101.com. 다음 시간에 봐요. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. 
You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to learn a language in 2022. If you're planning to learn a language in 2022, then this episode is for you especially if you want to finally succeed with your New Year's resolution, instead of failing or giving up in the next week or two. That's why today you'll discover, one, the four critical steps you need to take when learning a new language, and two, how to set goals and New Year's resolutions that won't fail you in 2022. But first, if you're looking for some free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Going to the Mountains Conversation Cheat Sheet. Learn all the must-know words and phrases for hiking and camping with this new cheat sheet. Second, the Most Common Adjectives PDF eBook. Master over 90 common adjectives with this bonus PDF picture eBook. You can download and review it on any device. Third, what's your New Year's resolution? With this bonus phrase list, you'll learn to say common goals like read more, save money, and learn a language. Fourth, the Winter Words and Phrases Writing Workbook. You'll learn over 60 words and phrases for the winter and holiday season and practice writing them with this printable PDF writing workbook. Download it for free right now. Fifth, must know email words and phrases. Learn how to say email, reply, spam, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to learn a language in 2022. Part one, the four critical steps you need to take when learning a new language. Every time you start a new language, you should start with one, goals, two, anchor points, three, grammar, four, reading. What are these four steps and why do you need them to succeed with language learning? Let's jump in. The first one is goals. Everything starts with a goal, but your goal itself can also lead you to failure if you don't set it the right way. So more specifically, you need to set small, measurable monthly goals instead of just, I wanna learn a language and be fluent this year. We'll cover goals in the second part of this episode, so stay tuned. After goals, the second step is setting anchor points. What are anchor points? Imagine a small ship in the middle of a big lake. It's windy, lots of waves, and the ship is bobbing up and down, drifting all around. What would you use to stop the ship from drifting away? An anchor. And just like an anchor keeps the ship in place, anchor points keep you from drifting away from your language. So an anchor point is a connection to the language that keeps you attached to the language and motivated to learn the language. One great example is language school. Imagine you signed up and paid thousands of dollars up front. Paying that much would motivate you to make the most of your time there. It's also a big commitment, one that you can't easily back out of. And school dictates your schedule. You have to wake up early, you have to do homework. Your life revolves around the classes. And as such, language school and the language itself become anchor points that your life revolves around. Anchor points can also be family or a partner that speaks the language you're learning. You're around them, you're exposed to the language, so your motivation to learn gets a bit stronger. Buying a language learning program or textbook are also examples of good anchor points. You invested your hard-earned money, which means you're serious about learning. Plus, you wanna make sure your investment doesn't go to waste, so you're more motivated. If you're wondering if you have any anchor points, you already have at least one. You're watching our lessons on YouTube, but the more anchor points you have, the stronger your motivation will be. So if you're into music or TV shows in your target language, those can serve as anchor points too. These are things that connect you to the language and add a bit of motivation to learn more, or at the very least, understand what you're watching or listening to. We covered goals and anchor points. What's next? The third step is you must have a good grasp of grammar of your native language. Now you might wonder, if you're learning a new language, why focus on your native language? 
Well, as native speakers, the problem is we know what good grammar sounds like, but we can't explain how or why our language works the way it works. So if you don't have a good grasp of grammar, the backbone or the rules of a language, then you'll have a tough time learning a new language. You'll jump in and start learning words and phrases, but you'll never learn how to put them together and make sentences. That's a common problem beginners have. Now, if you already know the grammar of your native language, how do you apply that to your target language? For example, if you're an English speaker, and if you know that English sentences follow the subject, verb, object pattern, and if you know that languages have specific sentence patterns, then you'd go look at patterns. Then, you'd have a good idea of how to create your own sentences, instead of learning random words first. Finally, the fourth step is reading. Reading is good simply because you can do it anywhere, anytime, and without a teacher. It's a skill you can get started on, on day one, on your own. Reading also tends to spill over into other areas. The more you read, the more words and grammar rules you come across. So you boost your vocabulary and grammar, which can seep into speaking and listening. If you read out loud, you're practicing two skills at once. Now we've covered what you need. Goals, anchor points, reading, and grammar. Setting anchor points, knowing your own grammar and reading are simple enough, but how do you set goals that don't lead you to failure? Part two, how to set goals and New Year's resolutions that won't fail you in 2022. The goal that you set can make or break your language learning journey. So setting the right goals makes all the difference between success and failure. Just think about all of the common New Year's resolutions. What comes to mind? Goals like, I want to be fluent someday. I want to speak the language. I want to lose weight. I want to save more money. These big, vague goals often lead to failure because you simply have no idea how to approach the goal and you don't know what you're aiming for. Instead, your goals should be small, measurable, and monthly. For example, speak one minute of conversation by the end of the month. Learn 100 words by the end of the month. Finish chapter one of your language textbook by the end of the month. If you're using our program, finish 20 audio lessons by the end of the month. All of these are small and specific. One minute, 100 words, one chapter, 20 audio lessons. This means that they're easy to reach, unlike something vague like fluency. They're also measurable. You know when you reach one minute. You can check if you know all 100 words or if you finished all 20 lessons. If you aim for fluency, you won't know when you hit it. It's too vague and too big of a goal and it may take years to hit. Finally, all of these goals have a deadline, the end of the month. That would mean January 31st of this year. Deadlines give you a clear date to aim for, and without one, you'll forever be floating around without much progress. So set a deadline for the end of every month. So now that you know how to set small, measurable monthly goals, leave us a comment. What's your small, measurable monthly goal? And what's the deadline? So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to learn a language in pairs. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to learn your target language fast and understand native conversations, even if you're a beginner? In this learning strategies video, you'll learn all about the line-by-line -line dialogue, a powerful study tool that, one, makes understanding conversations a breeze for beginners, and two, improves your speaking, listening, reading, and even writing skills. But first, if you don't yet have access to this tool and our lessons, just click the link down in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. One, what is the line-by-line -line dialogue exactly? The line-by-line -line dialogue is a study tool that makes absorbing conversations easier. And you'll find it in all of our audio lessons inside of our learning program. It breaks down the conversations you learn in our lessons into individual lines so that you don't get overwhelmed. For each line, you get the text in the target language, the translations, and audio pronunciation. So you can listen to each line, read along, and understand every single word. And you can also use the line-by-line -line dialogue to perfect your speaking, reading, listening, and writing skills. How? Take a look. Two. 
how to improve your speaking skills. The easiest way to start speaking on your own is to shadow what you hear, meaning repeat what you hear as you play each line. Just press the audio icon next to each line to hear it and shadow along. Next, if you want to perfect your pronunciation, click on the microphone icon to start recording. Then record and compare your pronunciation with the native speakers. These tactics get you speaking in minutes, and if you apply these to every lesson, you'll be speaking a lot more of your target language. Next, here's how you master listening. Since the line-by-line -line dialogue is a line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation, you can listen to each line separately, as much as you want. Click on the audio icon to listen again and again and review the script. Read along so that you can pick apart every word. That way, you can understand those fast, native-level conversations and never miss a word. Four, here's how you can practice reading. As you listen to the conversation, read along line by line. And if you don't know a word, click on the translations. They're right there in the line by line dialogue. You can even read with the romanized script to help you sound out the words. And finally, here's how you can practice writing. Now, this advice is not something you'll hear very often because it's so simple. It's so simple that most people don't even think of doing it. Here it is. Just grab a pen and copy the lesson dialogue down into a notebook. The big benefit here is there's no writer's block. You don't have to worry about what to write. It's all there for you. So, if you want to learn your target language faster, understand native level conversations, and improve your speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills, then get free access to the line-by-line -line dialogue. Sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. You want to understand real-life conversations in your target language, right? Well, what if you could immerse yourself in conversations and listen to them as much as you want, like you would music, and start understanding and speaking more of your target language? Well, you can do all of this with the dialogue track. And in this video, you'll discover how the dialogue track, one, immerses you in the language, two, helps you memorize conversations easily, and three, gets you speaking more. But if you don't have access to our lessons in the dialogue track, then sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is a quick 10 to 30 second audio track with just the conversation of the lesson. Let's say you're doing a five minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word. And by the end, you know what it all means. Now, if you want to re-listen to that conversation without retaking the whole lesson, that's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation without any translations. So you can re-listen to the conversation or download to review at a later time. Second, here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you remember the conversations easier. Just listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Second, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. Imagine you've finished 20 lessons, and you downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. Create a playlist and play those 20 tracks as you're going about your day. You'll immerse yourself in the language and quickly improve your listening skills. Third, you start to speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. And as a result, you end up speaking more of your target language. So if you want to start understanding conversations, take advantage of the dialogue tracks, which are available inside every one of our audio lessons. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Going to the Mountains Conversation Cheat Sheet. You'll learn all the must-know words and phrases for hiking and camping with this new cheat sheet. Download it for free right now. Second, the Most Common Adjectives PDF eBook. You'll master over 90 common adjectives with this bonus PDF picture ebook. You can download and review it on any device. Third, what's your New Year's resolution? 
With this bonus phrase list, you'll learn to say common goals like read more, save money, and learn a language. Fourth, the winter words and phrases writing workbook. You'll learn over 60 words and phrases for the winter and holiday season and practice writing them with this printable PDF writing workbook. Download it for free right now. Fifth, must know email words and phrases. Learn how to say email, reply, spam, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. Sixth, looking for a new language learning app? With the Innovative 101 app, you learn language fast and start speaking in minutes because the audio and video lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download Innovative 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers in our complete language learning program, get 55% off 24 month premium with our extended holiday deal. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.